Hello, listeners and or watchers. Uh, this episode's going to be a little bit different. It's um, I was going out of town, and so I interviewed uh, my granddad, uh, Wilder Smith, and um, it's it's very visual. So if you are listening to this, I would recommend going either to the YouTube, um, which should be in the link in the description, or to uh, Spotify because it has a native video player. So either one of those will will let you watch the stuff because we go around to my hometown and explain the history of it and that kind of thing. So um, I will see you next week. Henry Wilder Smith, welcome to the show. Yes. Um, we are in your truck. My Ford F-150. Yes, it's it's pretty new. Yeah, it's um, 2021. Wow, how do you feel about all the fancy gadget, gadgets and gizmos that it has? <laughs> I don't know. I hadn't figured them all out yet. <laughs> I only figure them out as I need to use them. Uh-huh. And uh, so I liked, I liked it back when it was very simple. You just had on-off switches and, mm-hmm. and the, your radio, you just had about five buttons you punched and it brought in the stations you wanted. Mm-hmm. I liked it. I liked it like that. A lot simpler. One of the things I like about it, I like the big screen, the cameras all around. I like it in the dark when you walk up to your truck, all the lights come on, so you know, you're not in the dark, you know. Interesting. That's nice. The the engine start stop. That's for me. That's what um what I think changes it from like the old cars to the new cars uh-huh. is when they you have that push to start button. Yeah. It's cause it's it's a really strange. I don't see. Because they could have had that in the past, right? Like the technology. I suppose they could have. All right, you want me to talk about the old days? Yes, yeah. So we're driving around um, Swainsboro, Georgia. Yeah. And this is the house I grew up in right here. And uh, the, back, the backyard back here, it didn't, uh, when I grew up, it did not have. Um, it did not have that back section on it. Mm-hmm. And they didn't see where that was added. And uh, so we had this whole section out here, this backyard. And at night, uh, we would play out at night. We played out games because we didn't have TV. Mm-hmm. So at night, we played out and we'd play kick the can cans right here. And we'd have all the neighborhood kids would be over and uh, just had a ball playing out at night. And uh, had good friends lived in this duplex right here and uh they would come over and play and believe it or not um uh, your uncle des used to have a horse back here a horse yeah he had a horse her name was nancy we kept her back here in this back field where the tennis court is but it it wasn't a tennis court then it was just an old field wow that's uh, how do you manage that well how did you manage it? He got <laughs> like where where did he get a horse from? He got the horse. The horse was seventeen years old when he got it. it was oh a, wow! It was an old horse, but still it was a horse, you know. And you got to ride it, and uh, he took care of it, and he had to take care of it himself. How long did he have it? Uh, probably two or three years, mm. and uh, but he had he had a big time with it, and uh, and we had a lot of fun with it at night when he because it it got out a lot, you know, and it would go into the neighbors. <laughs> strawberry patch and eat the strawberries and uh-huh. so the neighbor was always calling my daddy up in the middle of the night complaining about the <laughs> horse and uh this street right here is church street of course that, you, that, that was your house that's where you grew up yep that's um how i spent the first my childhood that's right i miss that house sometimes i bet you do it's it, it was pretty cool and this this whole street right here, I mean, th- this was in the 50s, 1950s. I mean, I lived up and down the street because all my friends lived here. A mm-hmm. uh, girl right here, I dated her in high school. Uh, I had a good friend that lived in that house right there. Uh, I had another good friend that lived right down that street. I had another good friend that lived in that house right there. And we were all the same age, you know, it was really funny. Mm-hmm. And he had a sister that I dated later on. 
<laughs> and uh, had two good friends that lived in this house right at the bottom of the hill. These are probably my best friends, and I spent most of my time right here. Mm -hmm. And this was the sort of ground central, you know, when, in, during the summertime, we always met right there, and all the kids from uh, this area would uh, all. congregate there, and then we'd go out from there to do whatever, we, whatever mischief we were gonna get into. What's and, the what's the most mischievous thing you ever did? Uh, well, uh, mostly we just you know we we didn't really get into a whole lot of trouble. Uh -huh. We uh, uh, I remember one summer we made uh, pot holders. You know what pot holders are, but we, you could you could make them out of uh, rope. Mm -hmm. And they had these kits that you could do and put them together. Anyway, we made a bunch of them, and we'd go around the neighborhood selling them. Oh, nice. And then uh, when we finished, we uh, put all our money together, and we all bought uh, goggles to wear in the swimming pool. <laughs> we had enough money for every one of us bought a pair of goggles, uh -huh. and uh, which was really nice. And uh, now my, uh, my uncle and aunt lived right here. Uh, that was Meredith and Sarnell Price, you know, Cousin Meg? Um, That's where she grew up, right there. Mm. You know Meredith. Leonard? I I'm sure if I saw a picture of her, I'd... Yeah, anyway. Anyway, that's where they grew up. That was my, my daddy's sister. Mm. And coming into Swainsboro, this was uh, right on this corner right here. That's a vacant lot now. It was a, a mortuary when I came when I came up. In fact, uh, uh, my granddaddy was laid, laid to rest in the front room there. That's the mortuary where my daddy, my dad worked there when he was a teenager. Oh, wow. And uh, right across the street where the, that, that used to be the Central Bank, Nance Buckley and Associates, uh, you know, uh, they, uh, uh, what, you, what am I saying? Anyway, it's, that used to be, there used to be a house that sat there and that was uh, where my, um, where your great granddaddy was born, right there. There was a house right there. Really? Yeah, and uh, we've got a picture of it somewhere. But Dr. George Smith lived there uh, in the early years. Huh. And uh, so that's where your great granddaddy was born. Great, yeah. And there's this theater right here. Yeah, the theater, the Dixie Theater, and they're redoing that. Mm -hmm. But it's. Uh, it's taking a while. Right down there, and it's, they're still working on it, but the plans are to still have it reopen, and they're gonna show first-line movies and everything else. And uh, this place right here, Custom Furniture Company, that used to be a service station mm. right here, and mm. it was a cupboard. Uh, that was that was just open right there, because in, in the top part, it was a cupboard service station right here. And then right here where the Citizens Bank is, that's where your great great granddad had his house. Right really? there. Yeah. But he was married to John C. Coleman's daughter, who was the richest man in town. Mm. And when he built that house, that was Coleman land. And so when he died, the house went back to the Coleman's. Mm. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't come our way. <laughs> of course, this is the John C. Coleman Hotel, and I uh, saw so all this was Coleman land over there. That's still a hotel? Uh, no, it's the county. The county owns that now. There are people that would like to make it back into a hotel again. And in fact, the uh, your your uh, your granddaddy, my daddy, mm -hmm. or your great granddaddy, yeah. my daddy, uh, he was the first bellhop, or the first desk clerk at that hotel when it opened. Wow! And uh, and the barber shop, this the barber just now died last week, and that barber shop has been there for ever since the 1930s. Really? And uh, been continuously running, you know, and... Uh, so this this town square area, what did it look like when, when you were my uh, was, The county courthouse used to be right here where the fountain was. Where the fountain is now, mm -hmm. there used to be a county a courthouse, a big, ugly square box. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because we've had... Um, 
we've had several, I think seven courthouses in Emanuel County since its inception, and four of them have burned down. Wow. And of course, we had some really pretty courthouses, but all the pretty ones burned down, and this <laughs> and this last one they built, mm -hmm. it, was just, it was just ugly. It was, it was cheap, it was an ugly box, and they didn't want to spend a lot of money. So when they ended up tearing it down, it didn't bother me a bit. Now, my brother, Des, he didn't, from Gene he didn't like that because he didn't like anything that changes. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't like change. So when they tore it down, he was, he was really upset about it. But they built a new courthouse over there, you know, across mm. the street. And uh, I was trying to think they... Uh, it used to be, you know, this used to be all uh, different stores. Uh, Elliot's department store used to be right there in the middle. That's where I bought most of my clothes growing up. And, and uh, Mr. Elliot was, it was real good friends with my daddy. They went to high school together and everything. So, mm -hmm. uh, And then right here on the corner was Smith and Power, uh, let's see. Smith and Spivey Hardware was a hardware store right there. And let's see, I was trying to remember what else was over here. Uh, I don't think there was a, those are the stores I can remember, Edge Department Store and Smith & Spivey to Hardware, and I think there was a feed and seed store over here someplace. But then in the 1970s, uh, there was a group that bought the whole, that whole section right there and made it the courtyard. Mm. And so this one group that owns all those stores and that and they tried to improve it, you know, uh, make it look a whole lot better. And they did. The stores looked really good. And back then they didn't look so great because they were in a lot of disrepair. Mm. And so this area right here. Um, it used to be the old jail. Yeah. So. And they used to hang people there. <laughs> uh when did that uh when did that change when did it become i, I was trying to remember because that was uh the jail was still here when i was in high school uh and i was trying to remember what year they actually uh tore it down and made you know built the new jail out there by the airport mm -hmm. but it was a big white building white brick building that sat here and uh but I know it was still here in the 70s because I came up here and saw some prisoners. Oh, really? As a, you know, as a medical person. Mm. And um, and that was in the uh, late 70s or early 80s. So it was, it was probably tore down, torn down in the 80s. And, uh, but they, he's, oh, he's going to go on. Um, but the the jail, of course, the jail sat there, and they had a courtyard behind it that was fenced in. Adam Mincy said to a group, and uh, that's where they hung people. Was the last when they, did last but the last hanging was back in the 1920s. Oh, so. But now my daddy was my daddy was present at the last hanging. In fact, we got a picture uh, of a him? picture of the the guy that's getting hung, and my daddy has on a, uh, overalls and a straw hat. He must have been about eight or nine years old. Uh -huh. And he's standing just off to the side of the sheriff. And right behind him is my granddaddy, who was Dr. Dr. Desi Smith. Wow. And, but I've got that picture at the house. I have to show it to you uh -huh. if when we go back. And uh, But it was taken, uh, it was taken here. I don't know uh, exactly where, because you can't tell, because it's just a, a brick building behind it, brick wall behind it. Yeah. And uh, but then he, then he, they took him behind the the covered, uh, you know, the fenced in area to hang him. And my daddy. He didn't see him hang, but he could hear him. He could hear him, hear his feet hitting the side of the building as he, wow. he was hung. So mm -hmm. he, he remembers, he remembers all that. And I, cause I talked to him about it when we found that picture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's not something you really forget. No, 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 the last hanging. So, and they, uh, of course, down the bottom of that hill, um, they call that Hangman's Branch down in the bottom. The reason they call it Hangman's Branch because that's on the back side of the church down there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's because that's where they used to hang people way back in before the turn of the century, you know, back in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. That's where they used to hang people. And they called it Hangman's Branch. Now, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know uh, the solid history on that, but uh, let me see something else. They used to be, Jeff Smith the third said to a group, "Thanks, Alan, for your prayers." They used to be right here. That was 
the fire station. Yeah, yeah, I saw a photo of that. Yeah, um, and they used to have fire trucks in there, and uh, of course, it's it. They moved it out there, you know, um, out on South US One. Mm -hmm. They moved this this one, but anyway, that's where the fire trucks were. So when I was, why does why does that happen? Why do they move stuff like that? Well, because they outgrew the building. Mm. They had more trucks, and so, and they've got two. They've got a, a, a fire station out on South US One. Then they've got one back over here. We pass by. Uh, you know, they built that brand spanking new one over there on Church Street near the Dixie Theater. Mm -hmm. And let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I was trying. I was trying to remember what. Because we used to play in this area. When we'd come home from the movie theater, we would play all down through here. But that was a feed and seed, feed and seed store right there. And uh, But across across the way, there used to be, I think it was a, a cotton gin right in that area over there. And they used to keep bales of cotton. There was a warehouse that had bales of cotton. Uh -huh. And we used to go sneak in there and play on those bales of cotton. <laughs> it was a lot of fun, yeah. It was kind of dangerous. We could have, you know, hurt ourselves, but we didn't think about that. That's part of the fun. Yeah, but it was right in that big area right there. But now it's all grown up, so. What movies were, were playing back in the day? Mostly it was uh, Westerns. Mm. You know, old, uh, B West, they called them B-Westerns, you know, because they, 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 weren't real bloody or anything not like nowadays you know they'd, they'd shoot somebody and they'd just go oh, and fall over you know you yeah. saw any blood or anything and of course this used to be uh it was a grocery store to start with and then they turned that into a, a video store you could go rent videos mm -hmm. when you when your mama was uh, a young and we used to rent videos there and go home take them home and watch them and sent a surprised emoji And believe it or not, one of the old courthouses, one of the old courthouses used to sit right on this corner. Uh, it was a two story um, clapboard kind of house. Mm -hmm. White, as I remember, it was white. And they, I can't remember where they moved it to, but they moved it. Uh, but it was still there in the, uh, in the 60s. And, uh, and then there was a bus station right here where this building is. A bus station? Yeah. It was the uh, Swainsboro was a major stop on the Greyhound bus route. And it, it was a, and they had a, a, a diner in there. So the people that would get off the bus and eat breakfast or eat supper. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was a it was a big bus station. So how much of the the stuff that like when you were my age, how much of everything is still here, like it's still the same place. <laughs> well, that's not still there. <laughs> this right here uh, that says United States Courthouse, that mm -hmm. used to be the post office. When I was growing up, that was the post office, and that's where my mother and daddy met. Mm -hmm. He was working there at the post office, and she was a school teacher here in town. And she was late one day uh, getting, getting to the post office to mail a letter, and they were already closed. And anyway, another guy was, that she knew was coming out, and she told him her dilemma. And he said, well, I'll tell you what, I know the guy that's working, and now I'll get him, and he'll open up for a pretty girl like you. <laughs> and sure enough, he did open up so that Nanny could go in there and mail her letter. And anyway, that's... That's how they met. That's how they met, and then he started asking her out. And actually, it was really funny because he had uh, my aunt Sally had gotten, uh, and and my uncle George, they were already married, and and my my mother was coming to town to teach. I mean to teach, and they had gotten her a date with my daddy, a blind date. Mm -hmm. And he got cold feet at the last minute. And he canceled out. Uh -huh. And so they had to get her a date with somebody else. And then he ended up meeting her. But he didn't he, he didn't like blind dates. Uh -huh. And uh, but then he ended up meeting her. And then as soon as he met her, he started asking her out then. Yeah. But that's where they met. And that's the, that's the original building. But it was just a post office back then instead of a courthouse. Mm hmm. So you said that the courthouse that kept changing places? Or? Yeah, because they, they built this new courthouse. 
and uh, they incorporated the old post office. They m made it a part of this new courthouse, mm. but this is a new courthouse right here. And they just built that uh, back at the turn of the century, because I think it was in 2000 when they tore down the old courthouse. Mm. And it's a, it's a little bit less susceptible to burning because it's made out of bricks. Oh yeah. Well, the other one was made out of marble and brick, and so it wasn't going to burn down. But the one before that had burned down. Mm. Even, even though it was brick, it still it was uh, you know the inside was fat lighter, uh. and it burned down. And uh, and this was my my uncle George's law office right there, and it's still there. He built that. I can't remember what year he built it because his law office used to be downtown, right in the center of town. But then he he, he just he just needed more space, so they built this building right here. They and built that, that. Yeah, and his partner still runs that, Sid Shepherd. Uh huh. He still runs that office. And even though he's getting, it's now Shepherd, Gary, and McQuarter. Mm. But Sid's probably getting a little bit old too. And this is the new. Uh, Emanuel County Emergency Operations Center. Huh. <laughs> That's where they're going to have uh, uh, 911. That's where the 911 call center is going to be. Ah. Now this, uh, now this tower, right, water tower right here, that was here. That's been here for I don't know how long. Probably a hundred years. Mm. That's an old water tower. That was the original water tower. So you ran a clinic with um, your wife. Mm -hmm. How'd that get started? Well, uh, my dad, you know, was a uh, he was a, a general practitioner, mm -hmm. doctor, and he had a practice. And when I went to PA school. And I came back uh, and started practicing with him. And then uh, my brother Mason, he finished the next year in PA school and he came back too. So the three of us were uh, practicing there. But th they, they had a rule, we could not, we could not get paid by Medicaid. Medicaid just wouldn't pay PAs. Mm. They would pay doctors, but they wouldn't pay PAs. So what we had to do is we had to make our practice a rural health clinic. Mm. Then we could get paid because they paid PAs working in rural health clinics. Yeah. So then we could get paid. So we built, um, uh, my daddy had a hospital and in 1968, he sold that hospital to the county because he saw the handwriting on the wall that the state was just making it more and more uh, unfeasible for s private doctors to have a hospital. Mm -hmm. And they just made the regulations that got worse and worse. So he saw the handwriting on the wall, so he sold out to the county. But part of the deal was that we got to use the clinic part of the hospital for 10 years rent free. That was part of the deal for mm. selling it. So in 1978, that ran, ran out, and so we had to get a new clinic. So we built the building that we've got, we're in now. Mm -hmm. And we built that in 1978, and that's how that came about. And then uh, your grandmama, uh, after the children, after all our children got school age, and Leela Gladys started school, then she decided to come back to work full time. Oh, really? Yeah, so she came in and started running. She was the clinic administrator. We needed somebody in there that could take care of the administrative part because we were so busy with the medical part. Mm -hmm. And we just needed somebody to do that. So she came in to do that. And so that's how we all got started. And then uh, when she died, I retired and uh, we sold out to the county and um, in the county, this just uh, back in November, they shut the they shut the doors. Mm. So with the clinic, it's no more. Mm. Uncle Mason works for Dr. Howard. He works for the hospital, but he's over at Dr. Howard's office. But I wanted to show you something here, but we have to get out to see it. All right. And uh, this is really neat. This is called the Old Settler Cemetery. I 
don't know if you've ever seen a grave this big before. Uh, I don't think so. This is John C. Coleman's tomb. Oh, interesting. It's as big as the king size bed almost. <laughs> but it's got it's got all of his Civil War battles listed on it. It's got all all the battles that he served in in the Civil War. Uh-huh. And then that's his wife, Maddie Mooring. She was a Mooring. So that's John C. Coleman and his wife. And John C. Coleman had two daughters. One of them was named Juanita. And Juanita is right here. And she was married to your great, great, great granddaddy. Ah, George oh, interesting. L. George Leon Smith, MD. Mm -hmm. So when when he died, he got he got buried over here with the Coleman's instead of with the Smiths, because <laughs> this is where the rich people were buried. Uh huh. But anyway, I, I want you to look at this grave. This is this is uh, uh, Juanita Coleman's grave, full size angel. You won't hardly see a grave like this. Yeah. They just had to make sure people knew. Yeah. And they had one child uh, that died in infancy. Mm. And that's the only child they had. Uh, but he had two children by his first wife. So this was his second wife. Mm. And our, our ancestor was his first wife. And her name was Maggie McLeod. But she died. They were married for 10 years when she died. And uh, Juanita Coleman nursed her during her last months. <laughs> uh-huh, and, and so that's I'm, how they met? I'm sure that's how they got to know each other because she was, uh, she was uh, let's see, she was a good bit younger than him. Let me see how much, what's her birth date? Hold on. Yeah, so she was 14 years younger. Younger than he was? Than he was. He was born in 1860. She was born in 1874. Wow. So a uh, good bit of difference there. Yeah. But then she died, uh, and uh, and and he, he married a third time. <laughs> but his third wife outlived him, and I think she left him at some point. Uh-huh. But that's really, but he always stayed friends with the Coleman's. Ah, so that's why he's buried here? Yeah. But in, anyway, it's just it's just neat. And the other the other Coleman daughter is let's see right here. Yeah, Luck. That was the second daughter. So Juanita, John C. Coleman had Juanita and Luck, mm. and she married Frank Mitchell. And uh, but anyway, he. Uh, Luck Coleman, do you, you ever heard of Luck Gambrell? <laughs> okay. She and her husband, David Gambrell, gave a lot of money to the city. But anyway, she was Luck Coleman's granddaughter. Mm. And uh, but she just died uh, last in the last couple of years. In fact. Might be around here. I think this is her right here. Yeah, this is her right there. And David Gambrell was a senator. Ah. Yeah. Well, that's look. And this park, there's a park right out in front of this uh, cemetery over there. Mm -hmm. And it's called the Luck Gambrell huh. Park because she gave the money for it. Ah. And, um, but you, when you stand back and look at all this. Yeah, it's, it's pretty it's big. Very impressive. Yeah. But this is the, the old cemetery of Swainsboro. You won't find many uh, new graves here. And, uh, and they're not that many graves. It just goes right over there. Mm -hmm. But all the old settlers are buried here. Anyway, I, I knew we'd find that interesting. Yeah. Especially since it's your relative is buried here. Yeah, <laughs> it's just one. That's my great granddaddy, so it's your great, great, great. great. Dang. Huh.